Hey guys, and welcome back to Adventure with the Terrells. It has been, I think, about three weeks since we have posted anything, and I wanted to take this opportunity to get in front of you guys and kind of give you an update on what's been going on in our life, explain a little bit as to why we haven't posted anything, and I know what what's occurred there and what we plan on doing moving forward with the channel and what's just going on in our day-to-day -day life. So we started an LLC called Adventure with the Terrells LLC. We did that about, I think, two weeks ago now and did a lot of research before. We had a lot of conversation about what we wanted to do. We knew we wanted the YouTube channel and we thought we knew exactly how we wanted that to look. And a few things kind of happened during that process of where we started the YouTube channel, what we thought we wanted it to look like, and then we hit monetization. And then we really started to try to understand, okay, we're now monetized, which was our goal, one of our goals that we had with the channel. We still wanted to post family and adventure type content, but we really have an opportunity to use the YouTube monetization and partner uh, group, if you will, with YouTube to start a business and start legitimately making some money and supporting parts of our life with that. And so that really translated into a conversation Ashley and I had of, hey, how do we chase this entrepreneurship mindset and how do we use the YouTube channel as an avenue to generate revenue, but also as a platform to build other things onto. And how do we house that all under this LLC? So we started the LLC for the YouTube channel, but we also started it because we've started doing some Amazon selling. And although you don't have to have an LLC to do Amazon selling, we really wanted to be able to have this LLC as an umbrella so we could start to do a few different things and it all just fall under the LLC. It makes it easier for record keeping. It legitimizes what we're doing with the government and it just separates the finances. So uh, a few reasons that we did that, but we just felt like it was the right time to do that. During that time, Ashley started her new job and she's really enjoying it. I will not steal her thunder. I will let her update you on everything with that. I know she was really looking forward to posting her video to fully explain why she changed jobs and everything that kind of got her to that point. I know it is a very emotional uh, topic for her that she is very passionate about and just a lot of emotions there from leaving a job that she'd worked for almost 10 years. So I know she's excited to post that and that will be coming up uh, and should be up in the next week or so, I would anticipate. But Ashley started her new job, which was really just starting to get her feet under her with that. And then our son's daycare, one of the teachers tested positive. That teacher had been vaccinated, but the school still shut down for two weeks. And that fell right at the time that Ashley had just started her new job and really wasn't able to stay home because it was a different kind of role, not one that you can do work from home. So I stayed home for one week with with Layton, and there really wasn't a whole lot of opportunity for us to film things in the same manner or format that we had been doing before, because I was staying home with Layton all day, trying to get as much work done as I could during the day. Ashley was coming home fairly tired, mentally strained, if you will, from learning all aspects of the new role, and just adjusting to all things new with that, right? And adjusting to everything you've known in the comfort of that old job and, you know, the, the insecurities I think that anyone feels when they make a job change. And so um, we just didn't have the same opportunities to film that we had been having before. Also during that time, uh, we really started to talk about this Amazon thing and, and kind of gear that conversation to entrepreneurship and some of this stems from a desire that Ashley and I both have of spending time, more time with Layton and really just wanting to be more present with him. But it also stems from even before we had Layton, just who we are as people 
And I think as we got older and life got busier and responsibilities got larger and um, we kind of let some of that fall by the wayside where we lost sight of what we really wanted, what our passions were. And so I think this LLC is really an opportunity for us to to hopefully generate enough income for us to really get back to those things. So we started looking at Amazon and one of the things that we first started looking at was retail arbitrage. If you're not familiar with what retail arbitrage is, it is simply really at its core, it's finding a product for a certain price and then selling it for a higher price where supply is low and demand is high or where convenience is uh, one of the factors. And one of the easiest ways I have to explain what retail arbitrage is, is literally you go into a gas station and you buy a candy bar or soda and you're buying it at a higher rate. Now you know that's a higher rate, but it fits your convenient need at the time. So you purchase it there rather than going to the grocery store or Sam's or Costco or something like that and purchasing it in a larger bulk quantity. You're purchasing it, purchasing it at a higher premium because it's convenient. And then let's say you're traveling or something like that. You're purchasing maybe a product that you can't get back home. You're going to purchase that product there and you're going to potentially pay a premium. Now, the other side of that is let's say you're back home and you've been enjoyed that product and you want to source some more, you may pay a higher premium because it's not in your area. So that's kind of an overview of retail arbitrage. You're finding a product and then you're selling it for higher on Amazon. Not higher than Amazon's rate, you're selling it at whatever the, the rate that really you've set is, but a competitive rate on Amazon, but it may be higher than where someone can just go source it themselves. And so I'll walk you through a few of the things that we have looked at that we are doing. We've been doing this for about a week now. Um, and we started just with a small investment of products that we purchased. And there are a couple of different ways to sell through Amazon. Before I get into the weeds of that, I'll kind of walk you through just a high level overview of selling on Amazon. So if you want to sell on Amazon, you register with Amazon and you don't have to have an LLC or an EIN, which is a federal tax identification number or any of that, although I would recommend it because it legitimizes everything, but you don't have to have that. So you set up the registration and Amazon will actually do a video call with you to verify that you are who you say you are, you understand what you're signing up for, all of those things, you'll review some policies, and then a couple days later, Amazon will let you know if they've approved your application to become a seller on Amazon. Once you do get approved, then there are two different ways you can sell on Amazon. You can sell on Amazon through FBA, which is fulfilled by Amazon, or FBM, fulfilled by merchant. The first thing I'll talk about is FBA, fulfilled by Amazon. This is where you are taking your products and you are sending them to Amazon to a warehouse that Amazon has and they're actually going to ship them, ship that product out for you themselves. And they're going to do that on their prime. So if you go in to look at a product right now and you find something that's prime and it's going to say sold by, some products will say sold by Amazon.com and some will say sold by if it was one of our products, it would say sold by Adventure with the Terrells, LLC, and then shipped by, and it will say Amazon.com if it's being fulfilled by Amazon. So that's an opportunity for you to find a product and get it sent to Amazon, and then when someone's browsing, they still get that Prime. If they're a Prime member, they're still getting all the benefits of their Prime membership when they purchase your product. When you do this, you also are asking or telling Amazon, hey, I want you to handle all the customer service parts of my product. So let's say you grab some Diet Cokes because they're low in supply on Amazon and you send them in, you purchase some at a Costco, Walmart, or Sam's, you send them in to Amazon and they're going to take care of shipping that for you. What they're also going to take care of is, let's say, in route to the customer that product gets damaged, that customer contacts Amazon 
they're going to be the ones to take care of it, as opposed to on a fulfilled by merchant, you would be the one doing all the shipping and handling the customer service aspects of that. So that's kind of an overview of fulfilled by Amazon. There are some pros and cons to that. The pro is, of course, that they're really handling everything. It's almost a no touch style. After you send it to Amazon, you're really not having to worry about it at all. There are a couple different factors in there. One, your product is going to potentially, if it sits for a while, it's going to have some storage um, that you'll get charged on it. But there are a few different factors that you can look at to move your, to guarantee that your product is going to move quick, to make sure that you are going to be able to make some profit off of it and that you're competitively priced. And that's through the Amazon Seller app, which really is a great tool. Um, you can take that seller app, you can scan an item on the UPC, or you can scan whatever the description of that product is an Amazon app, seller app should be able to read that. And if it sells on Amazon, it'll pull up the listing. And in that listing, if you're using seller app, it'll tell you, here's what it's selling at. If you send it through fulfilled by Amazon, here's what we're going to charge you. Let's say on a $15 item, and these are just fictitious numbers. It varies per item, per weight. Um, there's a ton of different factors that go into that. But on a $15 item, Amazon may charge you $5 for FBA. And so let's say you purchase that item for $5. Amazon is going to char charge you $5. So $5 is going to be what your profit is but you're also going to have to remove your shipping costs to Amazon. Now your shipping costs to Amazon is at a lower rate than what your normal shipping costs would be if you just go to UPS because you're using Amazon's contracted shipping rates. So you do get a reduced shipping rate to send it to Amazon. That, those rates are reduced, but they also do vary based on weight and size, all the parameters that you would normally experience when shipping something. So whatever that difference is, that's going to be your profit. Now, if you look at a fulfilled by merchant item, what it's going to tell you is here's what it's selling for on Amazon. Here's what we're going to charge you as what Amazon calls a referral fee. And that is you are using their platform. They are providing customer to you. And so they're going to take a portion of that. That fee is going to be less than if you fulfill by Amazon because Amazon is not having to pay for the shipping to get to the customer. And they're not having to handle that product and store it in their warehouse, get someone to unpack it in the box you send it in and then pack it up in an Amazon box when it does sell and then get shipped to the consumer. So that's kind of the difference between fulfilled by Amazon fees, fulfilled by merchant fees, but nonetheless, all inside the seller app, you'll be able to see that if you scan an item that is being sold on Amazon. Now, if you scan an item that is not being sold on Amazon, you do have the option of creating a listing. That does get a little bit complicated for a new seller. That's not something I have done. Uh, you certainly can do it, but it's not something I would necessarily recommend early on in your Amazon selling experience. But it is out there if that's something you wanted to do. Now, when you go to scan products, you can scan any product out there on the market, but you're going to be restricted in numerous different categories of what you can sell on Amazon. And what that's called is gated. Amazon is restricting certain categories, including grocery, clothing, what they consider topicals, health and beauty, a large number of restrictions on certain categories. And the reason that they do that is they want to ensure that you are a quality seller, that you can source your product um, from a genuine wholesaler who's approved to sell those products. And it's really a way for Amazon to protect their brand and ensure that people are not sending counterfeit products. So when you first start out, you're going to be very limited on what you can actually scan and sell on Amazon. And we'll get into gating and ungating probably in the next video and how you can go about that. So you can open up the market to be able to sell a lot more. But there are still products out there that you can sell even if you are a new seller. We are ungated in a couple different sections, but 
I promise you, when we first started, we found some products that we were not gated in that we were able to send. It does take a little bit more time and it does take a little bit more legwork, a little bit, a lot of scanning, extra scanning in the store or comparing online, things like that. But it is still possible. And I realize now that maybe I skipped over a, a big piece of, of kind of when I say scanning in the store, I mentioned scanning all these items. One of the places that you can source or, or one of the areas that I first started sourcing product in is at Walmart clearance. So clearance, a couple things you got to watch out for though, is if you go to the Walmart clearance and you take your Amazon seller app and you start scanning things, if that has been a clearance item for a while, if it's a discontinued item, if it's a clearance item that is happening all across the country, when you go to look at Amazon, it may or may not, but it probably will reflect a reduced rate if that's been a nationwide clearance item because the market is dictating what the price is on that. And so you also have multiple other Amazon sellers who are potentially sourcing that same product from a clearance section at Walmart. So that's gonna drive the price down. So make sure you're utilizing that Amazon seller app just because it's on clearance does not necessarily mean that you're gonna turn a profit, but that is a great area to source in. But a lot of it, when you're first starting out, is do research on what categories Amazon is going to, right off the bat, gate you in and what you are ungated in, which means what you are permissible to sell. And then just go to a local Walmart or go to a Kroger or a Parks or a Price Cutter or whatever your local gro grocery store is and just start up and down the aisle just scanning items. And I think that's one of the best ways to really start to understand what selling on Amazon is and what specifically retail arbitrage is, you will see differentials in price on really every single item. Some are going to be a little bit more on Amazon. Some are going to be cheaper. What you're looking for is, hey, what are the items that I can find where there's a $15 difference because Amazon only has two in stock. If I get this item, can I send it into Amazon and can I turn a profit? That's what you're looking for. And a lot of what you'll see with, at least in the grocery category, is if items are unique, if they are regional based, then you will have some, some success with those items because if they're limited time, regional, people can't get them at their local grocery store, that's where you're going to be able to succeed. But you can do that really across the board in any category. So that's how I encourage you kind of get started is really just going to whatever store you choose, go to their clearance section and just start scanning and really understanding kind of how all of those functions in the app work. So you do all of that and let's say you do your fulfilled by Amazon. You're going to take that product, you're going to send it in. Amazon is going to charge your FBA fees up front and what that is, is they are charging, when you send in that item, let's say that they're going to charge you $8 for your FBA fees per item, and you send in 100 items. Well, Amazon's going to take all those FBA fees and they're going to attribute it to your account, okay? And so that's going to make your account have a negative balance, and that's okay. Our account started as a negative balance as well. And as you sell items, your revenue, so your money back from the cost of the product, as well as your profit is going to start eating away at that negative balance. So that will reduce. And as you sell other products, you will start to see that money come back. Now, if you sell FBM, you're obviously not going to have those FBA fees. And FBM is where you are shipping that item straight to the consumer. They're not going to be eligible for prime shipping if they subscribe to the Prime membership, but they still will be eligible for free shipping. Now, when you list an item, you're going to list it for whatever your price is, and the Amazon seller will help, seller app will help you on this if you're shipping by merchant. merchant. You're gonna sell that for your price, and then you're gonna build in your shipping. There is a way to separate it out, but I encourage you to build in your shipping costs. 
So if that item is $10 and you look it up and it's going to take $8 to send, you're wanting to list it for $10, I would recommend that you list that price for $18. So that consumer can go in and see $18, pay that, and then you already have your fees calculated in there. So that's what a fulfilled by merchant kind of looks like. On the fees, Amazon is going to take that referral fee out that I mentioned earlier, but they're not going to charge it to your account yet and put you in the negative. They're going to wait until that product actually sells. You can do both. We do both FBA and FBM. FBM is a little bit more work, and I will tell you that I prefer FBA, but sometimes if a product is in demand or if it's seasonal, it will sell fast enough to do FBM that Amazon can take up to two, three, in some cases, four weeks to process your items into their warehouse and for it to be eligible to be purchased by the consumer. So if you're selling a seasonal item, you may not want to wait four weeks for it to get processed into the Amazon warehouse, especially if that product is low in demand already. You may want to list it and say, hey, I'll send this to you today if you purchase it and then you can kind of get that squared away from that supply and demand ratio. So that's kind of the differences there. Another factor to consider is there are two types of Amazon seller memberships. For a pro account, you're going to pay $39.99 a month, and that is your buy-in to be able to sell with the pro version on Amazon. Now, the pro version is going to allow you to get ungated in certain categories that if you choose the, it's not a free version, but if you choose the non-pro version, you wouldn't be able to get ungated in. So if you choose the pro version, it's $39.99 per month, but Amazon is not going to charge you any additional fees regarding the total number of shipments that you send out. There's no cap on that. Now, the other option is to, to choose a non-pro version, and that is not going to cost you anything from the start. But what Amazon is going to do is they're going to charge you $1 per item that you sell. Now, there's no cap on the number of items that you can sell on pro or non-pro. But if you do the math, if you sell over 40 items, then it's going to make sense to do the pro version. And also, if you're looking at ungated in multiple categories, or any of the gated categories really, it makes sense to do the pro version. So a couple things to consider there as well. So I feel like that's kind of a really, I said a high level overview of Amazon selling. I know that got into the weeds and kind of all over the place a little bit, but that's kind of what we've been grinding towards lately and what we've really been spending our time doing one sourcing products. We've sourced from Dollar Tree, from Target, from Walmart. We've gone to Dollar General. We've gone to uh, TJ Maxx, I think it was, or Ross. Um, stores like that are all great options to source products from. So we've gone to all of those. We've sent them into Amazon. Now we're starting to see some of those items become available on Amazon.com for Prime through our FBA. And so we're starting to see some of those items sell, which is great. And Amazon pays out every two weeks. So we'll see a payment come out in, I can't remember the date, but everyone's pay terms is different. It's from when you're starting your account, but um, every two weeks, Amazon will pay that out. So Amazon's going to pay us out after our uh, negative balance has been rectified and we'll take that money and then we'll go invest in some additional products and start the process all over again. This is a great side hustle um, and it can become a full-time job for you. There is the potential for that. What I will tell you is if you want it to become a full-time job or really a successful side hustle that you're going to have to put in some work. It's going to take a lot of hours. It is a job. And it is a lot of scanning. It is a lot of packing items, whether you're doing FBA or FBM. It is a lot of research to understand the rules and regulations and policies that Amazon has in place. Amazon is very protective of their brand, and they will take swift action to deactivate your account if you're doing anything fraudulent or if you're violating their policies or procedures in any way. So make sure that you're doing a lot of research there to understand what all of those policies are 
which ones pertain to you, and then also make sure that you're just abiding by all the general practices that Amazon wants you to do. But it is really a successful uh, way you can turn into a successful side hustle or full-time job, depending on how much capital you have to invest to start with will determine how, how much time that takes, depending upon what types of products that you are sourcing. If you're sourcing um, sports gear, that's a great item to source. It is a protected or gated uh, category for certain brands and certain things. And the Amazon seller app will tell you if you are restricted in that it will prevent you from actually listing that item. So you'll be able to see that there. But that is a really good opportunity to be able to purchase some clearance items or some discounted items when that uh, sport is now out of season. Now the downfall of that is you're going to purchase those items when they're on clearance or reduced, but the demand is not going to be there and that's why they're reduced. So if you're purchasing items like that, know that that's going to be a longer play, but one of the things that you can work on is sourcing consumables which is going to be anything like food or frequently used items, um, lotion, body wash, some of those things that are just consistently be going, uh, consumers will consistently go through. So you can purchase those and that's going to be the shorter play. But what I will tell you is the margins on those are not going to be necessarily as high. So if you set it up correctly with a legitimate business and LLC, that's what I would recommend if you're trying to turn it into a fairly large side hustle or full-time gig that you set it up legitimately with an LLC, that you go with the pro account, that you do a lot of online research. Now, if you start to do some research, you will pretty quickly run into, hey, sign up for my course uh, type videos or people producing content that says, hey, I'll, I'll give you the keys to the king kingdom if you're willing to pay a thousand dollars. I didn't do that. I don't recommend that you do that, but to each their own. I have read and watched videos on numerous horror stories through people doing that and not really coming out any better on the other side. So keep that in mind. Uh, you can give it a whirl if you would like. Um, there are plenty of content cre creators out there on YouTube that are sharing a lot, if not all of the same things that you would learn on those very expensive courses and online reading materials. So know that that content is out there. You do have to dig and, and you have to go find it um, because your first probably hundred searches are going to be, your search results are gonna be people that are pushing content that they want you to pay for because as they generate people that are purchasing that, they can advertise it, right? Um, so they're bringing in revenue and they're spending advertising dollars to push that out. So you know that you're going to have to do some work and some digging to find that free content, if you will, but it is out there. And uh, you can do a lot of the reading on your own on Amazon's website. Amazon has a, what they call seller university. So there's a lot of great content out there that you can go and watch videos through Amazon and kind of learn the basics as well. So I will stop talking about Amazon right now, um, FBA and FBM. I, I feel like I could talk about this for probably a week straight because I have just really been heavily involved in the research. But one of the things that we want to start doing on the channel is really start putting content on the channel that surrounds Amazon selling as well. We still wanna post family videos, we still wanna post adventure videos, but with all that said, Amazon is becoming a large part of our life and we are going to be heavily investing time and finances into it, so we wanna bring you along for the part of, of that, our, that part of our life as well. So expect those. I am happy to answer any questions if you have any questions. And if I don't have an answer, I'll try to point you in the right direction to find the answer. There are several Facebook groups that you could join um, to also assist with just general information. Some really good ones that I'm a part of that have a lot of good content for beginners. And so I recommend, recommend joining those if you're interested. Um, but yeah, 
that's kind of what we've been up to for the last couple of weeks. We're excited to get back into starting to film videos and bring you along for, for this journey and the everything we have planned for the rest of the year. Um, we are looking to take another trip in the trailer in mid-November, I think it is, um, to what's called the Buffalo River. And that was actually the Buffalo River, I believe, is the first federally protected river in the U.S. Could be wrong on that. Um, I'm sure someone will let me know if I am wrong, but there is some deep history in the Buffalo River. And so there is a event that we're looking to attend where we're going to go be a part of some people who also have some converted trailers and converted vans. So we're pretty excited about that. And we'll be filming prep for that and everything. There's some more insulation that I want to install on the trailer and get that back to really camp ready. So we'll be doing that and putting up videos for the prep and all of that in the next couple of weeks. And I think that's really the biggest update. I did tell you guys that I would share some of the things that we have sourced over the past, I guess, two weeks now that we've been doing this. One of the things that I sourced was at our local parks, Cliff Bars were on sale. They were in a six count and they were on sale for $5.50. So I purchased, um, I can't remember, I think nine boxes of those and I sent those into Amazon FBA. Now those were selling for $13.49 and it was that one specific kind. It wasn't across the board. That's one thing that's important to, to note and make sure that you're paying attention to. If you scan a UPC, some of the Amazon listings are multi-listings in one. So if a product is like a Cliff Bar, it's going to have all your different flavor variations at the bottom. Make sure that when you are looking at the Amazon seller app and you are looking at your profit margins, that you are looking at the correct version of that product. But those were selling for $13.49. After Amazon took their fees, I think they took roughly about $4.50. Um, and then shipping was was pretty inexpensive. I think it was $4 and we shipped the cliff bars and some other stuff in there. So let's say 25 cents uh, per, just for kind of easy math. So that's going to make us $3 or so uh, per box. And we've already had some of those sell on Amazon. Now that's not a huge amount, right? You're only making three some odd dollars per box. But the goal is that you can build your wealth in your business or build your capital and that you can do that more across the board. Now that's not necessarily a high profit margin and not a product I would necessarily recommend uh, for you to go out and source, but that's just as an example. Um, that was one of the things that we just started out as a beginner and that is in a gated category of grocery. And like I said, I'll do another video on gated and ungated and what that looks like. How do you get ungated? What steps do you need to take um, to, to do that? So be on the lookout for that. But that's one of the things that we source. One of the things that we found that was not in a protected category, um, and really I don't know how it wasn't, toys is a gated category, but we went to Walmart clearance and we were just scanning up and down the aisle, up and down the aisle, every pretty much everything we could find. And we found some action figures that were WWE action figures that were selling for, I believe about 15 or $16 higher on Amazon. So I'm not ungated in toys. I don't know how we were able to sell it, but scanning the Amazon app, we were able to sell it. What I'll tell you is I went and scanned a couple other toys because I was like, oh, okay, maybe I can sell some toys now. Um, I was gated in those. So it's the specific WWE action figures that we were ungated in. So that's something I would encourage that you look out for if you are just starting out. Um, go check those action figures out and don't be afraid that if you're gated in a certain category, start scanning things um, because you may get lucky and you may find a specific brand that you're not necessarily gated in in that subcategory. So don't be afraid to just scan everything in the store. And one of the uh, quote that 
uh, a, I can't remember what his YouTube channel is, but one of the, a quote that someone said on a YouTube video that I was watching about retail arbitrage was, if you're too embarrassed to scan that, don't worry, that's fine. I'll take that profit because I'm not embarrassed to scan it. So remember, this is your side hustle. This is your business if you're wanting to turn it into that. So don't be afraid to scan those items. This is how you're going to make money. And you're going to spend a lot of time scanning in the beginning. That's just part of it. That's your learning process. So don't be afraid to do that. Scan a lot of it. You can also go online. I'll spend a couple hours, uh, usually on the weekend, just early in the morning, having some coffee at the computer. And I'll just start going to either Walmart or Target, and I'll start looking at things and seeing what they're selling for on Amazon. Now, one of the things that I'll tell you to watch out for, though, is if it's a nationwide sale, it's going to reflect that reduced price on Amazon more than likely. So you're not necessarily looking for sale items. You're just looking for things that are low in stock or out of stock on Amazon. And can you find those at a local retailer? If you can, you want to go purchase those. The last thing I'll leave you with regarding the Amazon is don't try to do a drop ship type method. Numerous people are getting banned for that, and I've seen that. If you see that, hey, my local Walmart has something for sale and it's going to make a profit on Amazon, I'm going to list it for FBM fulfilled by merchant. You need to go buy that product before you list that for sale. If you purchase or if you list that for sale on Amazon and you haven't purchased it because you don't have the capital or don't want to tie up the capital, if that sells on Amazon and you go to your store to try to buy that and you can't find it and it's sold out, that is a negative mark on your Amazon selling account and can get you deactivated. So make sure that you do not operate in that manner. Um, this is, like I said, a business and you need to treat it as such. That is a customer purchasing that item. And you have told them through your online inventory that that is in stock and you need to hold true to that. So make sure that you do not uh, do that type of behavior because it will get you banned, deactivated, and that's not something that you want. Okay, guys, so my phone had died at the last minute, but that is probably enough Amazon talk for this video be on the lookout for those additional videos. We are excited to be back and filming some additional content. We really appreciate you guys being here. Leave a comment in the comment section. Let us know if you like this type of content. And we will see you guys in the next one. Bye. <laughs>